What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 times Hulk Hogan refused to do the job, brother. <laughs> this should be a, a very interesting one. If, it, if there's anything that we know about Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan was all about making sure he was the top guy. And for a while, he was the top guy in wrestling. He was one of, I mean, he's still one of the most notable names in wrestling everyone knows who hulk hogan is anyone he's done for the business but we also know his ego was just <laughs> massive damn near bigger than the wrestling business probably in his eyes and he was the type of person you would literally have to run him over with a vehicle while the referee's not looking only for him to possibly put you over and he would still kick out well, he'll try to kick out at three. You know what I'm saying? At the last possible moment, you may be able to get a, a win off of Hulk Hogan because he all he was all about protecting his character. So we're gonna check the times where he he was like, nah, I'm not losing to this guy. He can hit me with a meteor. I'm not losing to this guy. Should be an interesting one. Appreciate all the love and support. Let's get right into this one, man. Something cultomaniacs. Hulk Hogan didn't become Hulk Hogan just by saying his prayers and eating his vitamins, dude. You see, the Hulkster got to the top of the wrestling mountain based on his markability, charisma, yeah. ability to sell and show emotion, and yeah. his enviable winning record. Jack? Rarely tasting defeat inside the squared circle, Hogan only lost to people when he felt like it made sense from a business perspective, or, you know, would ultimately benefit him in some form or fashion. Yeah. <laughs> Consequently, there were a few stars that Hogan wouldn't lie down for, mm -hmm. even when sometimes that was the plan all along. And I mean, really, what are you gonna do, brother, when the Hulkster doesn't want to do the honors for you? <laughs> I'm Adam Pachisi from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 times Hulk Hogan Hulk refused to do bro. the job. Brother! But first, when you need the best possible protection, who do you turn to? Brock Lesnar? Brock Lesnar. Let's get right into this one, man. Haku? that should by rights have headlined WrestleMania 8 didn't get its due on pay-per-view until 1994. Ric Flair was Hulk Hogan's first WCW opponent after the Hulkster's much Hold hype on, signing that summer. Wait, 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 wait. Squaring off at Bash at the Beach, Hogan the match that then Ric Flair. Okay, okay. The match that should by rights have headlined WrestleMania 8 didn't get its due on pay-per-view until 1994. Ric Flair was Hulk Hogan's first WCW opponent after the Hulkster's much hyped signing that summer. Squaring off at Bash at the Beach, Hogan defeated Flair in his debut to bag the WCW title. Business as usual. Yeah. According to the original plan, the Nature Boy was supposed to regain the title in the rematch, setting up a third and final about that would, of course, be won by Hogan. Yeah. Instead of an actual victory, Rick could only defeat Hulk by countout at Clash of the Champions the next month before taking an L in the trilogy concluding Steel Cage retirement match at Halloween Havoc. Hogan apparently didn't believe WCW fans were ready to see him lose, much less drop the title so wow. soon in his run and use the old creative control card yep. to put the kibosh on the proposal. Damn. Hogan would only drop the title at Halloween Havoc 1995 to the Giants, and even then it was by disqualification, and the result was pretty much declared void a week later anyway. Number nine. Bro, he didn't even want to do the job for Ric Flair. That's, that should let you know. That should let you know who we're talking about here. In Randy Savage. Mm. Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan squared off hundreds of times in matches on pay-per-view, television, and on non-televised live events over a 15-year period. That's crazy. You would think that after so many in-ring meetings, the Macho Man would have won at least one pinfall victory over his rival come partner come rival. Well, you would think wrong, because outside of some DQ and count-out victories, Savage failed to ever score a one two three on the hulkster how is that possible I, I don't even know how that's possible i didn't know that so that's that's fucking wild is it that across many years and two companies nobody saw the business sense in having randy win at least one single solitary match even via nefarious means to build interest in a rematch down the line or is it that hogan always made his mission to always look stronger than his mega powers partner that's cool loved working with his real life frenemy because savage drew money was good in the ring and could make hogan look as good as anybody 
And while he's never explicitly come out and said, I refuse to do a job for Randy, it is telling that it never happened, even when it seemed like the logical, money-drawing thing to do. Yeah. Number eight, Steve Austin. Oh, I definitely when heard Hulk about Hogan this one. returned to WWE yep. in February of yep. 2002, most fans assumed he would immediately be set on a course for a collision with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah. With WrestleMania right around the corner, it seemed absurd that the Rattlesnake and the Hulkster wouldn't lock horns on the grandest stage of them all. As we all know, Hogan ended up stealing the show with The Rock, while Austin got Scott Hall as a consolation prize. Mm -hmm. As well as a general belief that the match would be a bit of a clash of styles, one issue in getting Hogan versus Austin in the ring was the small matter of who would win and who would lose. According to those in the know, neither man was willing to do the favors for the other. Many years later, Hulk would say, and I quote, I wish I could have put over Steve Austin. Hogan says a load of old bollocks. Why didn't you just do it? Granted, we got a classic match in him and Rock. That was classic. Fantastic, actually. One of the best WrestleMania matches of all time. That crowd was electric. But imagine if it was Stone Cold in that place, too. I think it would have just been... That would have been even more crazy because... Pretty much after Hulk Hogan, the next biggest star was like mega star. We're talking about mega star. We got the superstars and then we got the mega stars. After Hulk Hogan, the next really mega star was Stone Cold. And then you can you can really interchange between Stone Cold and The Rock, but most people will generally say it's Stone Cold. And Stone Cold versus Hulk Hogan, you gotta put Stone Cold over. I mean, Hulk Hogan's done it all, so it, ah. <laughs> oh, brother, I should have did that years ago. I should have put old, put over Stone Cold, brother. I was, I was tripping. Sometimes, doesn't he? Austin and Hogan teased the match several times in the years that followed Mania 18, but it never ended yeah. up happening. It would have been absolute box office if it did, but getting them to agree on a finish would have been a job in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Number seven, Terry Gordy. This is not so much a case of Hulk Hogan politicking his way out of losing, but more of a unique situation where he, as a contracted WWE star, was being protected on a show that Vince McMahon was co-promoting with other companies. Hogan was scheduled to take on Terry Gordy at the Pro Wrestling Summit on April 13th, 1990. Sharing the bill with the likes of Hogan, new WWE champion The Ultimate Warrior, Randy Savage, Jake Roberts, and other WWE stars were some of the top dogs from All Japan and New Japan. WWE's only demand going in was that both Hogan and Warrior had to win their matches. Of course. Gordy, theorizing that he made his living wrestling full-time in the Far East and couldn't afford such a high-profile loss, backed out of the match at the 11th hour. Damn. Enter Stan Hansen, a man who had wrestled Hogan when he was still known as Sterling Golden to save the day and stare at the lights for Vince McMahon's hot dog-skinned Golden Goose. Wow. The Lariat had no issue doing a job for Hogan in the televised Tokyo Dome Spectacular, but there was simply no way the reverse would have went down. Number six, That's Brock Lesnar. After oh, the initial yeah. nostalgia rush of Hogan's 2002 return wore off, Vince McMahon decided the best way to utilize the legend would be for him to help give the rub to the up-and-coming stars of the day. Which is why Hulk teamed up with Edge for a short tag title run, tapped out to Kurt Angle on pay-per-view, and was positively mauled by Brock Lesnar mm -hmm. on SmackDown. <laughs> the destruction job at the hands of the next big thing wrote Hogan off television, but Hulk himself believed he would only be gone until he was ready Ready to come back and avenge his loss. WWE wanted to book the rematch, this time for Brock's undisputed title at Survivor Series. But they had zero designs on Hulk waltzing back into the picture and dethroning Lesnar. Yeah. On the contrary, they wanted another dominant and decisive victory for the champ. That makes sense. Too thrilled with the prospect of suffering major back-to-back -back losses, Hogan said, no thanks brother, and mm -hmm. opted to stay at home a little longer instead. He yep. only came back in early 2003 to re ignite his rivalry with The Rock and start a new one with Mr. McMahon. Number five. Yep, that's it. He was like, nah, I'm not doing the job. He could have did the job, but he was like, nah, I'm not doing that. He's already beat me once. I'm, he, no, no. <laughs> you know, I'm, no. 
Bret Hart. Bret Hart was fine with Hulk Hogan's spotlight-stealing antics at the climax of WrestleMania 9 because he knew in the back of his mind that the new world champion would be giving him the belt back at that year's SummerSlam. Mm. At least that's how Vince McMahon had pitched things to the Hitman. Bret was under the assumption that he and Hogan would headline SummerSlam in a rare babyface versus babyface match which would see him cleanly beat the Hulkster in a true passing the torch moment. Well, absolutely none of that worked for someone, brother, and so of Hogan course. instead dropped the strap to Yokozuna in screwy fashion at King of the Ring. According to Hart, he was furious with Hulk's attitude change, especially after they had supposedly shot a tug-of-war-style magazine cover to promote the mooted match wow. and chewed Terrible Terry out backstage at the pay-per-view. Damn. Fred contends that Hogan told Vince that the excellence of execution wasn't in his league and would never put him over in the middle. Hart Damn. continues to hold a grudge about it to this very day. Number. F That's kind of fucked up, bro. That's not only did you steal his spot like at WrestleMania, you was told, hey, I'm going to put the belt back on you. He's going to drop it to you. You're thinking, oh, that's awesome. That's the ultimate rub. Only for him to do some backstage politicking, lose the belt so you don't have to face him. After y'all took a photo shoot together of a tug of war for the championship, only for this motherfucker to tell you or to tell Vince he felt like you weren't on his level. That's... Hulk was a Hulk was an asshole, bro. Before Jeff Jarrett, mm. the incident between Hulk Hogan, Jeff Jarrett, and Vince Russo at WCW Bash at the Beach 2000 remains one of the most controversial in wrestling history. Yep. Everyone involved has their own story as to why things went down the way they did, but the upshot was Hogan leaving the company and subsequently taking them to court over what transpired. The whole charade, to recap, saw Jarrett lay down for Hogan in their WCW title match, mm -hmm. after which Hulk cut a semi-shoot promo deriding the backstage chaos in the promotion at the time, only for Russo to then come out later, which wasn't scheduled, and deliver a scathing character assassination on the Hulkster. Mm -hmm. This all came about because Hogan wouldn't drop the title to Jarrett as Russo had wanted. Jarrett, who was disgusted by how the whole scenario unfolded, has somewhat tried to defend Hogan in the past, noting that he believes Hulk would have lost to him as asked had he known what it was all leading to down the road. Since Russo didn't know what he was having for dinner that night, let alone what Hogan's creative plans would be moving forward, the champ took his belt and went home, mm -hmm. never to return. Number three, Shawn Michaels. Oh the Hulk hogan Shawn Michaels situation is another where the players involved had their own versions and things have become so muddled over time that you end up not exactly sure just what the hell went on. Michaels maintains that the idea was to do a best of three series with mm -hmm. Hulk winning the first match, Shawn the second match, and Hulk the third. Which would have right been fine. Right before their SummerSlam outing, however, Hulk informed WWE that it would now be a one and done yes. and that he would be going over, naturally. This, yeah. the Heartbreak Kid says, is why he went out and oversold much <laughs> yeah. of his opponent's offense and then cut a sarcastic <laughs> promo on Raw the next night talking about how fast and agile Hogan was in their match. Hulk, for what it's worth, says that he was prepared to have more matches and even put Michaels over, but decided against it after Sean's mocking promo. In any event, nothing changes <laughs> the fact that Hulk Hogan, for whatever reason, refused to lay down for Sean Michaels. Don't know why. After all, and it was one of those things where that match, because of that situation, is still one of the funniest matches. I may have to show Dub that match on our uh, Patreon. We may have to check that match out because that's one of the funniest matches because Shawn Michaels said I right, fuck it you're Mr. <laughs> Untouchable right I'm gonna show everyone why you're the greatest I'm gonna fucking oversell because I can <laughs> All the times HBK neglected to drop titles and do favors in the 90s, it's hard to feel too much sim- And then you got you got always, hey, it's one of those type of things where like he was that guy that didn't want to do the job for a lot of people. He was that guy. So it's, you know, I guess you could say karma. Empathy for him. Number two, Sting. Mm. WCW expertly built the main event of Starcade 1997 for over a year to the point where fans were desperate to see Sting finally get his hands on world champion Hulk Hogan. Mm -hmm. The only conceivable outcome after so much time, effort, and energy spent was for Sting to beat Hogan black and blue, and let's face it, still orange, before either making him tap out to the Scorpion Deathlock or pinning him after a Scorpion Death Drop. 
According to Eric Bischoff, the Hulkster exercised his right to creative control on the day of the show when wow. he said he wouldn't be putting over the man in the face paint after all. Cue a ton of tension and a mad scramble to come up with something palatable for the paying audience. Hogan eventually relented and said he would lose the match, but then allegedly bribed referee Nick Patrick to deliver a normal three count in place of what was supposed to be a fast one so that it looked like Hulk beat him fair and square. The icon then got a cheapened win after Bret Hart, who was acting as if a fast count had indeed taken place, restarted yeah. the match. An all-time terrible finish and an yeah. early nail in WCW's coffin, all because one person didn't want to do business. Just, just take the, the normal pin. Like, that's so convoluted. Oh, that's like if Roman Reigns, we go back to rest, uh, this year's WrestleMania, that's like if Roman Reigns gets pinned, right, by Cody, but say he has a foot on the ropes, but the ref doesn't see it, like, that's like, a, you know, that type of situation, like, giving some type of out or whatever, and it's like, wait a minute, what? You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he just, you know, everyone would be excited or whatnot. Oh, my God, he, he won. You know what I'm saying? Cody got the job done. Then the ref, out of all the times, look at the replay. They restart the match, and then Cody loses. It, it like it takes the 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 excitement and the build up of everything that you know, you've been working towards for a match that people have been wanting, and you throw it all away because one person doesn't want to do the job clean. I don't know. Number one, Randy Orton. Mm. A year after the Shawn Michaels fiasco, Hulk Hogan was back to once again flip the script and ensure he walked away with a fresh entry in his win column. The Hulkster had been feuding with Randy Orton in what was really a glorified excuse to promote his daughter Brooke's dreadful album. As yeah. a full-time member of the roster with some serious upward momentum, you would have put money on the legend killer hitting an RKO and pinning the legend to end their rivalry. Yeah. And that is perhaps why you should never put money on something that is predetermined, yeah. or rather why you shouldn't put money on the outcome of a match where one of the participants has full creative control over their character. Yeah. Orton, at this stage in his career, didn't have nearly the backstage influence he would wield mm -mm. in later years, and to be fair, was probably on thin ice after serving a 60-day suspension, mm -hmm. and he was duly outfoxed by the wily veteran, who scored the clean pin with the usual after a basic 10-minute contest, the last in Hogan's WWE career. Going out by beating a 26-year-old on the second biggest pay-per-view of the year, 4D Chess, brother. Yep. And it's one of those type of things where, you know, you don't have that backstage pool and you just got off suspension, so you kind of got to do whatever they tell you to. He kind of had no other choice but to let Hulk Hogan do that. He had no other choice, so. But yeah, man, this is a very interesting video. It's all about Hulk Hogan pushing his power, brother, and backstage politicking <laughs> that's literally what it is man comment down below let me know some other wrestlers that you feel like hulk hogan should have did the job for if they weren't listed in this video man let me know down below who y'all feel like hulk hogan should have put over when he had the opportunity and chance to but i appreciate all the love and support you guys show on the channel road to 150k and i'm still young to be the youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking in with me see y'all next one peace